I'm glad you joined me this morning. Thank you. I appreciate you being here, being with us this morning. It's a great day. Amen. We all know that God is good all the time. I know some of you just said that with me. And uh, although that we are challenged, I know there's not one person within the sound of my voice that doesn't face a challenge of some kind, some kind of adversity or something. But I want to tell you this morning, God is on your side. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But And you know the thing we are convinced and are assured of that God watches over his word to perform it. Now, you have to give God the opportunity to perform that word by speaking that word. So think about it. Are you speaking the word over your circumstances so that he can perform something in your life? So that's a good test right there of your faith and where you're walking. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, as we get started this morning, I want to take just a few minutes and worship God. You know, praise is acknowledging what God has done, what he's doing, and what he will do. Praise God. Amen. And worship is acknowledging who God is. He is the Most High God. He is Possessor of Heaven and Earth. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is Almighty. He is the wonderful God that is faithful to His Word. He's merciful, and, you know, He's just good, praise the Lord, and He is love, praise God. Yeah. Amen. So it's good to always praise the Lord, and that's kind of what our theme is going to be about today is praising the Lord. So let's get started and praise. Father God, we come before you and we are praising you. We are glorifying you. We are lifting your name up. You are above all circumstances, all situations. Your name is above every name. Father, we just thank you this morning. We praise you. We give you glory. You are the God that provides for us. Hallelujah. Thank you for your provision. Praise God for your provision. You take care of all of our needs. Father God, we thank you and praise you. You are the God that heals. Yes. This is the year of divine healing. Yes. So we walk in that divine mm -hmm. healing. We Amen. just rally around your healing this morning. Yes. Thank yes, you, Father. Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank Glory you, Lord. to God. We thank you, Father, that you are the God that restores all the things that the enemy stole from us, we receive them back in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being our restorer. Thank you for restoring us into fellowship with you. Praise you, Lord. We just give you glory. Father, we know you love us. We love you so much. We worship you this morning. We just praise your holy name. We thank you, Father, for being faithful and merciful unto us. And Father, this morning... I just pray that the words that I speak this morning will minister life to every person that hears them. I thank you, Father, and praise you that it goes forth and ministers grace to every hearer. Thank you, Father. We give you glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, one thing we all learned a long time ago, and you probably know, if you have a fireplace in your house, that heat is regulated by the fuel. So whatever you feed that, you're gonna get you're gonna get some heat from it. Amen. And of course, the more you put in there, the more heat you're going to get. Praise God. And you can do the same thing with what you say. You fuel your fires by what you say, whether they're a good fire or a bad fire. If you're gonna talk about bad things, then you're gonna have some real trouble brewing in your fireplace. Amen. So it's real important that you start fueling your fires with good things, great things, the Word of God things. Amen. You know, and it said that, somebody said that whatever you allow to build the fire the longest, it becomes the strongest. Hallelujah. Proverbs 26, 20 says, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. Amen. And where there is no whisper, contention ceases, and as coals are to hot embers and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to inflame strife. You know, whether it's negativity, the fire of negativity, or the fire of faith, 
you can apply your words to those areas, you're going to get some kind of fire built in your uh, in your life, whether it's, you know, that's why I encourage everybody, talk about something good, say something positive, start talking about what God says about your life and about you, start talking about what God says about your children, maybe your children aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, living the kind of life that you think they should be living, well, but you can call those things that be not as though they were. Start feeling that, build that fire of faith and for their lives and for their, for their walking with the Lord. Amen. Start talking about that. Uh, you know, it, de it determines what you face in life or how you face in life, what you say. Amen. If you feed the flames of, of faith with God's word instead of the negativity with uh strife and with contention then you're going to have a good fire of, of faith amen you know so stop complaining and stop uh, looking at the problem amen yeah. and um, i'm going to look in acts in chapter 16 and in verse 16 this is where we find paul and silas they were on their way to a place of prayer and when they were going, they ran across this young woman who was um, a slave and she had been uh, possessed by this spirit who was able to predict the future. So she had owners who would try to use her to get money for their benefit. Amen. And so what she was doing in those days is she would follow them around day after day after day, wherever Paul and Silas went, and she would start shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you to be saved. Well, after a while, this really annoyed Paul. He was kind of put out with it. So he got a little upset and he turns to her and he begins to cast that spirit out of her. Well, when he did, now she's not able to predict the future anymore. So now she's not able to bring a prophet to her owners. So now these owners are really mad. They're really upset. So what they do is now they've <clears throat> grabbed Paul and Silas. They take them to the marketplace where the um, uh, magistrates are. And they bring them before the magistrates. And they start telling them, these men are causing havoc and causing problems. And so the magistrates then begin to deal with Paul and Silas and command that what they do is they beat them with rods and take them to prison. So this is where we find in verse 25 that after they've been beaten severely, it says in the word of God, then they are sent to prison. In verse 25, it says, along about midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing. A robust hymn to God. Well, that's what the uh, Message Bible says. The other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Think about this. Here's a couple of God's faithful servants, and they're in a desperate situation. They've been out serving God, telling people about Jesus, t getting people saved, set free, and now they, are, they have been beaten severely. So first off, they were stripped. They were humiliated in front of everybody. Then they were beaten severely with rods. And then they were cast into the deepest, darkest of the prison. We're talking about the inner prison where it's very dark and very uh, secluded in there all by themselves. Now here it is midnight. I don't know how long they've been in there. But instead of whining and complaining and crying about all of their pain and crying about things, here they are. They begin to pray to God. And uh, if you've ever, you know, faced a serious situation, first of all, you realize where your help comes from. It's going to come from Amen. God. Amen. You can't start calling your neighbors or start calling your friends and family. You've got to call out to God. He is where our help comes from. Amen. He's the one that can deliver them. You know, a lot of times in our desperate times of struggle, what we have a tendency to do is we want to escape. We want to, well, if I can just get away to the beach this weekend. Well, if I can just find somebody to talk to. I just need to call my Aunt Bertha. She listens to everything I say. She's always got a word for me and tells me what I need to do. But if you'll just go to God where your help comes from, 
you're going to have more solace and peace than you've ever had before. Amen. Well, Paul and Silas didn't stop at prayer, although that's where they first started. They went in and began to sing praises to God. And the message translation says that they sang a robust song. So obviously it was pretty peppy and they were full of praise to God. Hallelujah. So it really comes down to it. When you're facing situations, we should just be praising God. When it, when it seems it's Amen. worst, when it seems the, the most horrible time in your life, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise him. And somebody says, well, I don't want to praise him for what I'm going through. You don't have to praise him for what you're going through. You praise him in the midst of what you're going Amen. through. You Amen. praise him because he's the deliverer. You praise him because he can get you out of any situation. He can provide for you the peace that you need. He can provide for you your your finances he can provide healing in your situation god is the provider in these situations amen praise activates the power of god and it sets in motion god's hand it sets it makes it available for him to work you know now think about these two men who have been stripped beaten and thrown into a dark dark prison and here they are singing, and they didn't go, well, I'm going to praise the Lord. <laughs> they didn't do that between themselves. They started singing loud and proud. They didn't care who heard them, and so all of the prisoners heard them, so much so that they listened to what they were saying. So the majority of people in today's society won't even praise God in church. I mean, you'll see them kind of raise their hand and look around and make sure nobody's watching, <laughs> nobody's listening to their voice, and they say, they use the excuse, well, I can't sing. I just don't sing very good. Listen, church, you don't have to sing. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can just start saying, praise God. That's praise. So you just need to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And you got to let down those barriers, begin to praise the Lord, and then what will happen? There'll be a suddenly, a suddenly, think about this. When you're facing a very troublesome problem, whatever that might be, when you've been beaten from the trials that have come against you into submission to it, when it's dark, you're thirsty when maybe you're tired and you've prayed every prayer you know how to pray you are out of things to pray you don't know what else to ask for you don't even know how to ask it's time to praise Amen. it's time to Amen. praise the lord Amen. because when you belt out that glorious praise and to the awesomeness of our God, the one who is there for you and never leaves you, never forsakes you, I'm telling you, all of a sudden, you'll have a suddenly, Amen. a suddenly Amen. will happen. The very foundation of the, of the building that has taken you, the, the taken you prisoner, that's captivated you in that situation, your doors are going to fly open, Amen. your chains are going to come Amen. loose, and everybody that has heard your praise is going to be involved in that Amen. too. Amen. Just like those prisoners. Amen. You're going to be set free, praise God. You're going to find that the peace of God that passes all understanding is going to give you revelation knowledge. You're going to have the vision of God is going to do something miraculous suddenly in your life when you begin to praise him. You know, when you think about an, another story of praise, is Jehoshaphat's army when he had the praisers go forth praise changed things yes it mm -hmm. changed things it got the focus off of the problem and on to God and it became they became God focused in 2nd Chronicles in chapter 20 in verse 25 21 it says Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. You got a problem that's overwhelming? Praise the Lord. You want his intervention? Praise the Lord. 
You need his favor in your life. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. You know, praise is more than just singing songs. It's like a plow. It prepares the soil. It gets our hearts right, soft, and pliable, ready to hear what God will say to us. You see, when you're going through something, your heart is hard. Your heart is hard. It's usually all mixed up with all of those problems and turmoil and the things that you're dealing with. And maybe you're angry at somebody because of something that happened. So your heart, which is the ground for where the seed of the word of God is sown, needs to be broken up. And that praise, when you begin to praise him and you begin to lift your hands and worship him, you'll find that that ground of your heart begins to change. It begins to get soft and pliable. So then when the word of God comes, it's a revelation to you. It's a knowledge to you. It's an understanding that maybe you didn't have before. Because now you can hear clearly. You can hear what God is saying. And he makes that way very clear and understandable. Praise the Lord. You, Lord. you know, praise is already an integral part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Well, sure it is. Think about, mm -hmm. I mean, today is Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me they're not going to cheer for your team. I mean, <laughs> we all do. If our children are playing in a football league or a soccer team, we go and we cheer them on and we're just rooting for them and doing whatever we know to do to make the game just be that that one that's cheering more and more. Maybe you've been playing a game of Scrabble and your team wins. Well, you start shouting hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Or you've got that one little kindergartner. Maybe it's your grandchild or your own child. And you go listen to them in their little school play, the very first one they ever did. And you're just sitting back there and you're just going, you were so good. They only had one line, but you were cheering them. That's, it's already a part of our lives to praise. God put that in us. He, will, he said if we don't praise, the rocks will cry out and praise him. So we want to don't give them the opportunity to do it. You do it. Start praising him. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in those times that we find out where our true faith lies, is it in the faith of a God who will serve, who will move the mountains, who will change the circumstances on our behalf if we praise him? Or is it in your situation being more than a mountain in your life? You know, we serve the one true God, the awesome God. He's more powerful than any trouble, more powerful than any trouble that you can go through, anything that you, you're faced with. He is all powerful, praise the Lord. And after, uh, after all, the mouth is the source of the release of God's power. In this tongue is the power for death and life. You determine if you're going to have death in your life, if it's going to be destructive, or if it's going to be powerful and give you life. Amen. Proverbs 13, 2 says from the fruit of his mouth a wise man always enjoys good you know we need to watch what we say we need to say those things that are good praiseworthy give glory to god in proverbs 13 3 it says the one who guards his mouth thinking before he speaks protects his life how true is that when you think before you speak which is i remember years ago I had a real issue with that. I was a very blurter. I would blurt out anything. I Whatever was on my mind, that's what came out. And sometimes it wasn't very positive. It wasn't very good. And a lot of times I hurt people's feelings or offended somebody or just was rude. And I think we need to begin to think before we speak. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Let him tell you what to say. Jesus only said what the father told him to say that's something to learn from proverbs 15 4 says a soothing tongue speaking words that build up and encourage is a tree of life so when you're talking to other people it's real important to begin to think and say what god says about them or their situation 
They don't need you to speak the obvious. You don't need to speak the obvious. Sure, they may have a lot of problems in their life or be dealing with something or could be making a different choices, but they don't need you to tell them that. They need to hear what God says about their situation. They need to hear that God is on their side. Things can change because God's word never fails. And when he, when you send the word of God, it always is, is working in their behalf. You know, I believe that if we will be audacious in the praises of our God, that his great power will be released in our circumstances. And not only will we feel different, but the circumstance will be different. Things will change. You'll have a different outlook. You build the praise, the fire of praise, by speaking God's word, by praising him for what he's doing, what he's done, and what he's going to do. Praise the Lord. That's when you are expressing your faith in God and his word to do those things. That's faith. That takes faith. 2 Corinthians in verse uh, chapter 4 <clears throat> in verse 7 says, For it is the God who once said, Let light shine out of the darkness. You know, when you're in a dark place, there's a lot of darkness. And the light comes from when you speak God's word. That's the light of the word is speaking it. And it brings light into the situation. And he has made his light shine in our hearts. The light of the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of the Messiah. But we have this treasure in clay jars. I like how Rick Renner teaches this. He talks about the clay jars that our being is like a clay jar. It's very, very fragile, first of all. And second of all, it can be broken in a minute. And we're not of this anything great. We are just a, like a clay jar. And it says, we have this treasure in this clay jar. The treasure is God Almighty. It's his word. So that, and it goes on and says, so that it will be evident that such overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. You see, recognizing that it's not coming from you, you're just a clay pot, but it's coming from the Almighty God. The power, the circumstance that's changed wasn't what you said. It was in who you serve. It's the God that you serve. He moved in your situation. Mm -hmm. You see, you are the goal. You are the spout. I like that we had a pastor that said this once. You are the spout where the glory comes out. See, you can say what the glory of God says about any situation. You can share the glorious glory of God through praise. Mm -hmm. Praise him for his marvelous works. Praise him for his infinite goodness. Praise him for his everlasting love. Praise the Lord. I believe that when we start praising him in the face of any adversity, we'll begin to see his amazing glory released in the situation and your things are going to change. You're going to see the things change. So this morning, I want to encourage you to remember to praise the Lord even when it doesn't look right, even when it doesn't feel right, even when you don't think, you're not thinking right. Because sometimes when we're in the middle of situations, it doesn't feel right. You don't feel like doing anything. You just want to sit and have a mully grub day. You know what? you got to praise God anyway in the midst of it. Praise mm -hmm. him in the midst of anything you're going through. Build the fire of praise in your life. You know, let's just praise him right now. Praise you, Father. Yes. Praise you. Praise, praise you. Praise you. Glory to God. Baso grande eso ne mandi santa e so si so ki kashi si vendashi ni minda. Glory, glory, glory. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. I praise you because your love is better than life. My lips are going to glorify you, Father. I praise you just as long as I live, Father God. And in your name, I lift up my hands. Praise your name, Father. Praise you, praise you. Father, my mouth is filled with your praise. I declare your splendor all day long. 
Lord, you are marvelous. You are glorious. You are worthy of praise and glory. Hallelujah. I extol you at all times. Your praise is always on my lips. Father, I just thank you and praise you for what you're doing in our lives. Father God, thank you for all the things you've done, for all the provision, for the houses that we live in. Thank you for the vehicles that we drive, for your provision of finances into our life, that our bills are paid, every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You give strength to our bones and strength to our muscles. Thank you for reviving our brains, that we think clearly. We have the mind of Christ, that the wisdom of God is formed within us. Thank you, Father God, for giving us peace that passes all understanding. Father God, there may be circumstances in our lives or in our situations we're faced with. We don't understand. We don't know why it happened that way, but it's okay. You've got it. You've got us. You're uplifting us. You're pulling us up out of the mire. You're setting our feet on solid ground. We walk in the presence of the Lord, and we rejoice in your name. Father, I pray for those that are dealing with maybe COVID symptoms in their bodies. Right now, I pray and believe and speak healing to your body in Jesus' name. I say, fever, you depart right now in Jesus' name. I say, body aches, be healed in Jesus name. Father, I thank you and praise you that you are the healer of all diseases, sicknesses, infirmities of any kind. You are so powerful that even right now you are touching them and from the top of their head, it's flowing all the way down through every part, through their lungs, through their muscles, through their stomachs. Father, I thank you and praise you that every their liver, their pancreas, is, they're healed in Jesus' name. Now, there's somebody that God is touching you right now, and you're feeling a warmth flow through your body. That's the healing power of God. That's the healing. Just receive it. Lift up your hands. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Begin to glorify him. Oh, praise you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you right now for that. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that there's those people that are struggling financially, that you are more than enough for them in their situation. I pray, Father, right now, you supernaturally suddenly bring the finances as they begin to lift their hands and praise your name. Money flows into their hands. Father, that even today, something supernatural happens in their life to bring in the money that they need right now. I stand in agreement with you for that. There's a person that's believing for just a hundred dollars. They're wanting, a, they're needing a hundred dollars for something. So right now, God is going to see to that need. He's meeting that need. Yes. Begin to praise him. Begin yes. to worship thank him. Begin Lord. to thank him. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. We just give you glory for it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your blessings in our life. We thank you for our family. Lord, we lift them up right now. There might be some that aren't obeying you, that aren't listening to the sound of your voice. Right now, Father, I pray you supernaturally send men and women full of the power of God, full of the word of God into their pathway. And Lord, I pray their ears are tender to hear the words that these people speak to them, that they'll minister life to them, They'll come to themselves and come home to Christ in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, Lord. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Now, there might be somebody this morning that says, I don't even know Jesus, but I want to know him. Well, you can do that this morning by simply saying a prayer by faith that you receive, that you believe Jesus was the Son of God, that he died and went to heaven, and he was risen from the grave, and he ever lives today, and he can be your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is say this little prayer. So if you'll say it right after me, and then be sure you let us know so we can send you a little booklet. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I repent for every sin. For every sin. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Create in me a right heart. Create in me a right spirit. A right spirit. And right now, by faith, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord. He is mine. He is mine. I am born again. I am born again. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you that. 
believe in today, somebody has received the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to thank you for your continued support and your faithfulness to serve the Lord. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not giving in to doubt and unbelief. Thank you for being faithful to read your Bible, to pray, and to pray for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for your financial donations. You know, I'm praying right now that every seed you've sown is multiplied yes, back to yes. you a hundredfold return. Amen. That God increase your monies. Amen. Hallelujah. And that you abound abundantly so that you will continue to be a blessing to all of those that God wants you to be a blessing to. You know, every need is met. Amen. Every body is healed in the name of Jesus. You know, everything restored that has been stolen. God is a good God, and he wants to bless you in abundance. Thank you for joining me today. Stay in touch. I love you so much, and I want to just encourage you and let you know God loves you, and in his presence is fullness of joy.